All right, so we're taking a look at the uh, target round for the practice competition 2022. And so a lot of dough use $100 to pay for two books that cost 11, let me write this down, 11.98 each. So that's times two. Two videos that cost 14.49 and uh, some miscellaneous supplies at 24.06. The tax rate is 7%. How much did she get back from her $100? Now this is a typical type of problem where you're gonna have to go and figure out the cost with tax and then go back and figure out the change. Now we're allowed to use calculators on this, so let's go ahead and do so. 11.98 times two, so that's 23.96. Then we have 14.49 times two, which is 28.98 plus, plus 24.06. And so not including tax, we are spending we're spending $77. Now, the trick here is, we need, we really want to go quickly. So chances are, if the first problem is easy and quick, the next problem is going to be a little bit longer. So we're going to multiply that by 1.07. This one represents the amount of money that we're spending on the goods, in this case, $77. This 0 0.707 represents the tax that we're adding onto it. So multiply that by 1.07, and we get, oh, no, she went. sorry. All right, sorry about that. Mr. Bailey uh, came in and had, had to chat. So where was I? All right, so we've gone ahead, do, 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 target. All right, so then, um, we're going to have to subtract that from 100, and we get $17.61 in change. And that's how you do that problem. All right. So that was just a, a bit of using the calculator and making sure the computations are right. So now things are going to be a little more interesting with problem two. So three consecutive prime numbers, each less than 100 have the sum that is a multiple of five. What is the greatest possible sum? All right, so here is the trick with this one. We could make a ridiculously long list of primes, less than 100, that's not ridiculous, but it'd still be kind of long. And we would you know, have to do a lot of guessing and checking. So there's gotta be an easier way. So here's what I know about primes. Other than two, and clearly we're not going to be using two because it says the greatest possible sum. So since we're dealing with primes, primes are either going to end in a nine, a seven, definitely not a five, a three, or a one. So knowing that, we need to have three numbers that add together to get to, what is it, greatest possible, uh, sorry, uh, so the sum has to be a multiple of five. So we're looking for three numbers that add together that we know is a multiple of five. Now to be a multiple of five, the units digit has to be a five. So we need to figure out what prime numbers, nine, seven, three, and one, we can add together to get a multiple of five. So um, nine plus nine plus nine, no. Uh, 9 plus 9 plus 7. No. Oh, 9 plus 9 plus 7. That, that would work. So 9, 9 plus a 9 is 18 plus a 7. So if we had primes that end with 9, 9, and 7, that would work because 9 plus 9 plus 7 would be 25. Okay, that's a multiple of 5. Great. Um, so looking at that, we can also, we also know that if we're looking at nines, nine plus six is uh, 15. So to get six, we have three and three. So if we have a nine, a three, and a three, uh, well, more realistically, 
it would have to be a 3, a 9, and a 3 that are consecutive primes. So what we're looking for is we're looking for numbers that end with 997 consecutively or 393 consecutively. <clears throat> so that in mind, let's start listing out the primes in reverse order to see if we get this order of primes. And then we know we have our numbers. So the first prime less than 100 is 97. OK, so then after that, we have 89. Um, so then, if this, so then, what about 87? What about 87? But 87, 8 plus 7 is 15, 15 is divisible by 3. 87 is divisible by 3, so it's not a prime. 85, no, 83, yes. So right now we've broken this 9 plus 9 plus 7 possibility. So then our next prime from here, 81, well, it's 9 times 9. We get uh, 79. So now this combination is in play. We have our 3 and our 9. And then 77, that's 11. 75, no, 73, that's prime. So now we have this 3, 9, 3 combination. And so we know that the three numbers that we're looking for are 83, 79, and 73. I got that one correct. So what is the greatest possible sum? Well, we're just going to add these three numbers together. So we have 83 plus 79 plus 73. And so you get 235, and that is your answer. All right. The winner of a local triathlon swam half mile, biked 15 miles, and ran 2.5 miles. He finished the race in 54 minutes for the entire triathlon. What is his average speed? Oh, I got this one. So, all right. So we know that rate times time is equal to distance. And so we're looking for this average rate. So we need to know the distance. And we already know the time of 54 minutes. So the distance is going to be uh, 0.5 plus 2.5. That's 3 plus 15. So that's 18 miles that is done in 54 minutes. But wait a second, we want it in miles per hour. So we need to turn 54 minutes into hours. And when you do that, you end up with 0 0.9. The reason why I'm able to do it so quickly is a tenth of an hour is six minutes, so 54 minutes is six minutes less than an hour, so that's 0 0.9. So we have rate times 0.9 equals 18. So we divide by 0.9, divide by 0.9, and we get the rate is equal to 20 miles per hour. Yay! All right, so target round number four. Oh, this is the coolest problem in, in the slot. I like this one. I got this one wrong. I didn't know what he was asking. All right, so this has a couple of things that, that, are, that go into it. So first, we have a cube. We know a cube has a length, a width, and a height, all of the same, uh, same value. So if we have a cube that has a volume of 8, we know volume is equal to length times height times width. It doesn't matter what order of multiplication. And so what, three num what number multiplied two. by itself three times is 8? 2. So we know that the side lengths are all 2. And then it says that the plane we have a plane that goes through exactly two edges. What does that mean? Now, a plane is a two-dimensional uh, a two-dimensional uh, space. Think of it like a piece of paper, only it's a piece of paper with no thickness. Now, since a piece of paper is so, so thin, it's easy to imagine a piece of paper with no thickness. A plane goes on forever in all dimensions. And for us to have a plane that goes through exactly two edges, the only way that plane can go through two edges is if that plane goes through a diagonal like this. So what they're trying to ask you to do is they want to know what is the area of this rectangle that connects these two diagonals. 
So right now, what I'm going to do is, um, obviously, this side length here is 2. The question becomes, what is this side length? And so to give a long-winded explanation of that, I'm going to rotate this cube so that we are looking at it head on on this side right here. So we're viewing it by this side right here. And so we have our plane that's cutting through the diagonal. And we know that this side length is two and this side length is two. And that's a right angle. Now, now you uh, probably realize that this is a special case uh, triangle. This is a 45 right triangle. And you'll remember the rule, I hope so, because we spent like four weeks on it. If this side length is A, this side length is also A, and this diagonal, it has to be A times the square root of 2. I'm telling you guys, you have to memorize these special case triangles, or else these problems take so much longer. So right now, I know that this side length here is in fact 2 times the square root of 2. Now, if you don't remember this, you can always use the Pythagorean theorem. a squared plus b squared is equal to c squared. And the reason why you can do that in this case is because we do, in fact, know two side lengths. So 2 squared, so we get 4 plus 4 because 2 squared is 4 is equal to c squared. Two plus, uh, 4 plus 4 is 8. 8 is equal to c squared. So the opposite of squaring is square root. So the square, rooting, the square root of 8 in simplest radical form. It's the square root. So we have the square root of 4 times the square root of 2. The square root of 4 is 2. And so there's our 2 times the square root of 2. The square root of c squared is just c. So you could use your, your Pythagorean theorem to figure this out. But really, it's much easier if you just remember the rule. All right, so we now have a rectangle. I'm looking at the rectangle head on. So we have this side length is 2, this side length is 2 times the square root of 2. How do you find the area of a rectangle? Base times height. So we have 2 times the square root of 2, which is 4 times the square root of 2. That is the final area.